restaurant, whipping boy. I mean, sometimes when a customer's losing money, it's, it's very hard to pick up the phone and call him. Like, you talk to him and you say, what do you reckon? And you say, oh, I really think this market's going up. I think it's a great buy around here. He goes, yeah, so do I. And he buys a bunch and then the market goes down. And he's, he's underwater. He's, he's losing serious amounts of money. It's very difficult to call that guy up and say, so, how's it going? What do you reckon? Let's have lunch, you know? How's the flight down? How's the flight down? Ah, uh, it's, you know, same old shit. Yeah? I was fucking pissing down when I got here. So, I thought it was gonna be snowing here. I was looking to see ice on the sidewalks. Yeah, well. You know, summer's coming. Cheers, man. Septils are 52 offered for 100. Am I working any? What am I working, please? I mean, just, just have a look at that. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 you know. And that's a move. That, that, that's, a, that's a big move. That's a movement without any sign off by any of the authorities. It's easy to look about, look at it in retrospect, but to, to work out what happened. Still, this is the busiest yeah. 10 days without any sign off the night that I can recall. Mm. I caught this a little bit. <laughs> See, from there to there, I caught that. Yeah. That was easy enough. <laughs> this bit here? No, I didn't. Yeah, I could write right up the old poo poo shoe with that one. Let's see, lottery tickets? No, they don't work. They're worse than anything. Unless you win, of course. <laughs> when I lose money, I try to psychologically punish myself a little bit and the best way for me to do that is to articulate to people my losses and for me to visually look look and see well there's so much money I lost right it helps me deal with it it's just my own way of doing it it's a lot, it's a lot cheaper than spending a hundred dollars an hour to shrink <laughs> morning man tip top The worst thing that can happen as a local is to have no interest in the market. Have it very stable price and no buyers and no sellers. How long are you down for? Uh, just till Friday. Well, that's not true. If, if, if things pick up later on in the week, I might stick around. You know, I got a few things I want to get my position the way I want it. Um, and I want to see if I can make a quid because I haven't, I've lost, lost heaps of money the last two weeks and it's... Oh yeah. It's weird that I come back on the day that the market decides to act fucking normal for the first time in two weeks. Oh yeah. Still, I think it might be a busy time coming up. I hope you're right. I'm doing a competition, trading competition, and I'll start next week. You are? Yeah. Sort of a, a trading competition? Yeah. I'm, using, I'm just using a mathematical formula. It's a computer system. <laughs> The whole thing. There's about 150 people at last. Uh, 150 people are in this. Yeah, because if you what win, is, what do you get? You get a million dollars to trade with for the next year. You get three big winners in a row, you're away. <laughs> All right. Because what happened, like, a couple of years ago when Larry Williams is a big trader. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was this one guy that was beating you. The guy covered his position near the top, did really well, and then started the trade and blew up and lost the whole lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? And then Larry won. Three for five. Yeah. Should have yeah, you should have taken the money and oh, that's half the problem. Know when to uh, pull the reins and take the money. Yeah. You have a, a big loss. You really have to come back, come back from it, and that's that's pretty hard. Coming back and trying to get yourself back in the routine of, of just chipping away and making little bits and not um, not risking too much and just really trying to stay on the ball and stay focused. 
He'll have a huge loss, he'll start meditating, he, he goes to Adja Bookstore and buys <laughs> all the mindfulness and Buddhism books the and books. Yeah, yeah, starts burning incense and goes on a really spiritual trip for a while and then focuses and gets back into it. Okay, mate. Where's Ozzy Dollar at, please? We're still close to 59. Oh, shit. Well, we're not out of the woods at this stage. Now, the other thing that I've heard that, that is, is useful information, when the Ozzy popped above 50, 59 at lunch, it was buying in Asia from a US investment bank, and at the same time, dollar yen was, was flat. So dollar yen didn't change it and we rallied it, indicating someone is exiting the currency. And I've heard from a reliable source that, that the hedge funds are now rolling their Aussie for one week only, where before they were fixing it one, two and three months. Buy me 110 years at your discretion. I'm, I mean, I'm unwinding a bad position, OK? So I'm, I'm looking to just fucking get out, OK? You take, you use your discretion. Thank you, man. Yesterday, between 4.30 and 4.40, it's only a 10-minute window there, but that's when the markets were closed. They intervened in the Japanese yen. The Aussie dollar rallied 50 points. Now, look at this. We're down at 60.14. We're gonna, this market's going to get hammered on the opening. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start getting my clothes on. Look at this. The three years, the three years of 32.34, that's down 17 points from the last trade on Psycom. Oh, excuse me, that's the, uh, that's the 10 years. My apologies, that's only down a couple of points. Yeah, hi. We're gonna open lower, aren't we? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, any particular reason why you're calling me? All right. Well, listen, <clears throat> I've got 125 March bills to sell on opening. You got it. Okay? Well, listen, you've got an order to buy. I've got an order to sell. Do your best. I'll let you go, okay? Bye. Hopefully, I'll get some bills sold before they crash. Look at the currency's on its knees. The 60-11, the currency's down 34 points. The currency's down 40 points since the close of SICOM. They got to fucking go to 24 hours a day screens. This bullshit to have these hour and a half of windows where you're fucked. Hello. Where at? At 38? I'm happy with that good fill. I'm sure it is. Thank you very much. Bye. It's a good fill. It's a good fill. Yeah, I think October could be a very bad month. Yeah, that would be a great month for us. Yeah. We'll that... be buying, everybody else will be selling. <laughs> That's how they make lows. <laughs> wow. How are you doing in the championship? It's pretty good at the moment. We're up 21.3%. <laughs> so I believe we're coming third. I've taken quite a few different signals and some I haven't taken and but uh, anyhow in the in the wash it's worked out that we're up 21 percent and I think that's pretty good. Nearly 800 billion dollars was wiped off the value of shares on Wall Street overnight as the Dow Jones Industrial Index suffered its second biggest points loss ever. The Australian share market is described by some analysts as having even further to fall than that in New York. And this could mean that there'll be a harsh sell-off when the Australian market opens this morning. The market's scared. I don't know about bearish, but scared. Although even still, it's not as scared as, the, as some other markets around the world. I mean, the Dow, I think there's some real fear going on over there. And the amount of money that's been going into the U.S. market over the last, well, since about 95, just pouring money into the, into the U.S. stock market. If, if that money starts to pull out, you know, this could go substantially lower. I think there are quite a few people hoping that it'll find a level now and then start to come back. I don't focus on who I'm trading with. I focus all of my energy and uh, on, on, the, on the market itself and where, where I perceive the market headed. Well, there's a rumor of intervention in the uh, yen. So all the interest rate markets took off and the spies just followed suit. So uh, we got a high at 35. I guess we buy a break of that. How's the December offered seven?
I'm really a firm believer that that you know, you know, hindsight's 2020 right through the asshole, and, and I and I don't really want to look back too far or look ahead too far. I'm trading for the moment. I'm trading for the moment. I'm trying. I am. I want to be the moment. I want to be a part of the moment. Future, past. believe it's happening to you especially if you know you've been you've been having a quiet period and you just you know maybe hadn't made a bunch hadn't made much money in a while and then you put on a trade and it goes your way and you add to it and suddenly you're on a roll and suddenly you think what's going on here you know you try you're trying to work out the sums your hands are shaking you're sweating you're thinking I know I'm up I don't know how much I'm up but I'm up I'm up big this is a fucking great market to be trading though I'm telling you you have no idea so you have no idea how good it is when it's like this. It's out of control. This is the mistake I made back in June. When I lost all my money. I didn't get off my lazy ass and get down here for this. And this time I was very lucky that I was down here already, so I didn't have to fly down for it. I just stayed put. And then and then it all started, this shit started to hit the fan. I mean, you know, these set bills are down 60 points from where they were on Monday morning. If you sold 500 on the opening, market moves 60 ticks your way. You're looking at uh, three quarters of a million dollars. Bang, like that. And it happens, too. I mean, people do. There's a guy down here, John. He takes very big positions. He would, he would have at least had one day where he made a couple of million dollars in quick fashion. I didn't want to summon the whole thing, but I... When I make money, I pretend like it hasn't happened. I don't look at, how, I don't look at my bottom line. I don't look at my statements. I don't don't even think about the money. I only look at for the next trade. I had a pretty good morning. Then uh, just going into lunch, the market rallied, and I uh, got caught short. So I, I, I was down at lunch, but I've just come back again. Our data is terrible. <laughs> I've just had, um, I've got Genesis to send me theirs, because every time I give Larry a system and he sends it back, we're just getting totally different results. Yeah. Rumor of intervention, sorry it wasn't true. Oh, I don't know, I just heard that uh, it was an unfound rumor. Yeah. So, where do we get out of these trades? When it's all quiet enough for the guys to sign off, then they send the chits up and then we do the data entry side of the actual trade. So you've got two sides to it, as well as the, um, the, pro the, the actual guys behind the booths and their back offices. So you've got like four sides, you can basically say they have to make sure that one piece of paper goes through for the client and then they can go home. And then the girls are here till one o'clock in the morning and it has to be done. So. Every day. It was a messy close this afternoon. I know it was. Everything looked okay at about, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock. Looked as though it was hanging in, the currency was all right, and there was some confidence coming back. But that smash in the last 20 minutes. Obviously, they were intervening in the dollar. Yep. This is like three o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. Australia's getting pounded because the big boys yep. are pounding it. One of the reasons that they're selling the Aussie dollar so strongly is that it's the only Asian currency that's got some liquidity. I mean, New, oh, Zealand, really? New Zealand dollar's got some liquidity, but if these guys, for example, want to sell the ringgit or sell the Thai baht... Everybody's like, backing off on it. There's yeah. no liquidity, yeah. so they can't get set. And so that is an argument to say that the fall in the Aussie is being exacerbated because we are a mature market. 
once the speculators get big enough that they are controlling and, 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 and hammering into currencies, the central banks are going to throw their hands up in the air and say, we can't handle this anymore. This is not to our benefit. And when the banks decide that, they can close the game down. Yeah. I, I think we'll look back in 20 years' time at this period in time and say, wow, those were the glory days of speculating on currencies. Yes. <laughs> There's going to be somebody at the station. That little baby. They used to call honey fair. She's going to cry. When the tail of that one ever broke. It's going to be auctioned. It's time to spend some money. We've also got the uh, original painting by ex Wallaby John White, which has only been at $100. That is a very cheap for a putting by next Wallaby. Ladies and gentlemen, one hundred dollars. Get up there, put your name on the board. Here it is, John. This Michael Jordan never been used basketball. Where's the bidding going to start? Let's go. Five thousand bid right off the bat. That was my top price. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, ten, eleven, eight, ten, eleven. Up oh, ten thousand, up oh, ten thousand, it's on take a little bit. Up oh, ten thousand, 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 up oh, ten the three years up tomorrow morning on the opening. Yeah. I even have 85 bid! 85 bid the three years! That made me real happy. Hey, it's the rest of my three years. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just work 150 at four. I got a kiss from you. Yeah. Where were you, Daddy? I've been over with my house, working. You know, trading. Working, working. Working, working. Working, working. What have you been doing? I'm playing. Playing? Yeah. And working, too. And working? Kingston. Kingston. How are you, man? He's Kingston the Wonder Dog. Because we all wonder what he is. We all wonder what you are. What are you, anyway? What kind of doggy are you? Okay, I'm underneath. Okay, grab a crayon. Crayon, here's a crayon. Gray crayon. You lose your hunger for it. And if you don't have the hunger to trade and, and, and do it, then you won't be successful, you know? You also get sick of the market and sick of doing what you're doing. And you go and try to find something else to do, and <clears throat> the market's your life, really, so... It's, not, it's um, very important to try to create hobbies outside of work, you know. You just go in and, and make money every day. You're not putting anything back into society. You're not creating anything. You just yeah. either go in, lose money, make money, and that's... It's like going to track every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, like it's a monotonous thing. It's not, it's not healthy. It's not a good environment, and you're not doing anything good for anyone. I reckon there's always a purpose behind why things happen. So maybe the fact that, that I got creamed in the markets in, in June and lost several million dollars in a very small period of time, and this land fell into my lap in late July happened for a reason. It was just interesting how karma works. I mean, it's just, it was kind of meant to happen. That's the feeling I got before I even went and looked at the piece of land. I said, shit, this is meant to happen. This is kind of like, you know, a bit of a cosmic event here that, you know, this land wants me to kind of be, uh, be its owner. It's always been my dream to own a golf course, but more importantly, uh, build golf holes. If you have money, you have to be accountable for your money. You got to do the right thing about your money. 
I've never been a philanthropist as far as donating money to things. This, this to me, is a donation. This is, this is, this is a, the money that I spent on this piece of land is a donation to the, to the future people of this planet. It doesn't matter what I paid for, and it doesn't matter what it's ever going to be worth. Go in, go in. Right? Because this land is now officially off the market. This is probably the single thing that in my entire life that I've done that I really, I, uh, that I'm actually proud of. What do you hear when you're out here? What do I hear? I don't, do you hear a car? I don't hear a car. I don't, do you hear any airplanes? I don't hear any airplanes. I hear yeah, nothing not except nature. Yeah. And that's, what, and this, that's, got to keep it that way. So if you add nine to go to 18, which, which general direction would you be going? I'm looking, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at going out that way. Right, okay. Down, down the beach to the, to the uh, yeah. south. So I can't... Along the beach. Yeah. You could build, you could build four golf courses here if you wanted to. You could build four 18 holers on this property. There's that much land here. This is classic Lynx style piece of land, and I intend on trying to keep it that way. And I did lose and pay the, buy the drinks. Although there's no magic pill to solve the world's financial headache, the hopes of many have been raised by President Clinton's speech. Well, hey, the spy pitch. Miss Bramble, that's me! Did you see me? Yeah, yeah, did you yeah, see yeah, me? yeah, yeah. What are you doing this I was in the spy train that day. <laughs> <laughs> Most analysts believe the Australian dollar's rally will be shortly involved. Oh, 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 shit. Shit. Typical Australian optimist. <laughs> How's that? Like the, uh, the economics and the Aussie dollar takes higher priority on the news than the fucking politicians. Yeah. Well, it, is more, it is more important. The government can do less in the global economy than the market can. And I think, I think that's how it should be. I believe Alan Greenspan is more important to the American economy than Bill Clinton. And that's just taking his personal problems even out of the equation. When you growing up, what was on the top of the news? You know, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it's just, I mean, the yeah. whole, the whole thing, Brandon. the whole thing is spiraling up yep. in, into this thing where all of a sudden the whole world and everybody's concerned. I mean, walk, talk to a cab driver in Sydney about the bloody market. You know what I mean? It's just, yep. the whole thing is spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. And it's just going to be interesting to see how it ends Pro up, mate. Are you going to want a glass of wine, John? Certainly. Oh, the best thing that you ever said to me, Craggy, you give a good phone. And that's the highest compliment that can be paid to a fucking a spieler. <laughs> One of the services that a broker can provide is massaging a client's ego yeah. position. Okay. Ego position. Okay. Now, now, dude, tell me, no, tell me, it's, tell me, it's called, it's called, it's called, tell me, it's called, tell me, tell me, tell me you don't do that. Tell, I never do that. You never, never do that, ever? I'm, I'm never going to pander to you if I think you've got a position. I'm not calling it pandering, John. Yeah, mass, oh, or I'm never going to, sorry, massage your position. Because, for one reason, there's no way in the world that a broker who works for you can ever know what your position is. Because you turn positions so so quickly that, you know, my mind doesn't stick that long. I mean, you do because it's your business. Right. You might have been long the curve at 38, got to 40, and you're going to twist something against the bill, so you, you knock the curve out here because that's going to produce you something over there, and you buy back at 31, and it goes to 41. All I, I said to you is... On, 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 on my third point of, of the yeah. services that a broker provides, maybe what I really should have put in there was... Um, uh, drugs and sex, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Which one? Which uh, one? that one. Ugh. Jeez, there's heaps on that plate. I'll okay. that one. <laughs> Spangled Emperor is one of the best reef fish. Spangled Emperor and Red Emperor, which are related. And 13 most people like to catch and 37. Trout. What spreads was that? Oh, those are separate decks I put in. I forgot all about those. I guess I should write that one down just in case I uh, get too drunk tonight and uh, forget all about it. No, that's all right. I'm just going to write it down. Right. What do you reckon, Hammer? Can't believe we sold 38 on the curve. Yes. That's just... And the fish? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Um, you bring your Am I still in the bid in the spy you pulled up? I just wanted to uh, chat. We finally got the results of the um, competition come through, and uh, we've come 17th. I think there was 103 people to start off with, so it was a reasonable result, but I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, I didn't really get my targets, and 
I don't know, I found it a little bit uh, tricky this year, and I just want to see what you thought of it. Well, obviously the winners thought it was an easy year. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you, you win some, you lose some. It hasn't been a straight path to heaven, Dan. Yeah. Now, that's the life of a trader, though, is, is we get used to getting beat up and saying, hey, they're going to let us down. We should go right back on and keep doing what we do, because if you stay in this game, you win. Big gains on key Asian markets have propelled Australian shares to their biggest single-day gain since last October. Wall Street provided the impetus overnight, with investors displaying their...